We'll turn your Bibles to the book of Isaiah, chapter 7. Tonight I'm going to talk about Jesus, the perfect sacrifice, and this is a Christmas communion service tonight. But Isaiah, chapter 7, here the prophet, he looks down through the centuries of times, and he speaks of our Savior's birth. We're reading from chapter 7, beginning Isaiah 7, 14, and look at what the prophet said. Isaiah said, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now, if you'll turn over a few pages in your Bible to chapter 9, and let's look at verse 6. Isaiah 9, verse 6. The prophet is talking about the coming Messiah. Beautiful scripture here. It says, For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Isaiah said, A virgin shall conceive and bear a child, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. He also said, His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So God walks down through 42 generations, and he found a virgin named Mary, who was to bring forth our Savior, the Son of the living God. And when Isaiah saw this, he got so excited, he said, who in the world is going to believe this report? A child is born. A son is given. The child that was born was Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. My subject tonight, Jesus, the perfect sacrifice, let us pray. Father, we love you. Praise you. Lord, speak to hearts tonight. Lord, manifest your glory. Manifest your presence. Your miracle working power, Lord. This is a miracle season where you came to us. We could not go to where you were. So you came to us in the form of a babe in a manger. Lord, with a mission to die upon a cross, to give us a great salvation, to provide healings, to provide blessings. Lord, to pour out your glory in the church. You said, I'll build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And you're coming for a glorious, triumphant, victorious church without spot, blemish, or wrinkle. And Lord, so it should be a church walking in victory, walking in the power of God, walking in the glory teaching others about Jesus, full of life, full of vitality, full of your anointing. Bless us tonight. Heal your people, Lord. Give them that miracle moment. Lord, some come with a tremendous need. Meet that need, Father, according to your riches and glory. By Christ Jesus, our Lord. And everybody said in Jesus' name, amen. The child that was born was Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. When God created man... He created him from the dust of the earth, and he gave him the word. He gave him dominion over all of the world. And the word human, it comes from two Latin words, humus, which means dirt, and man, which means mankind, or a human being in dirt, a spirit man in dirt, someone just like God, when God created man, he put some dust together, clay, blew in him the breath of life. He became a living soul. Man made just like God in his form and his image, but man in human dirt. Hallelujah. So if you wonder why you have the ring around the collar, that's it right there. Don't ever think too highly of yourself than you ought. I take my shirts off. Thank God for a wife that washes them and irons them. And cleans them up for my, I, she, I told her the other day, I said, thank you for keeping my stuff clean. Amen. How many like clean stuff? Well, God likes clean stuff. He does. Coming for a clean church. Amen. But the man that God created was a man in a spirit. See, God is a spirit. And so man was a human spirit inside this clay body that God gave to us. And the Bible tells us that God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Well, guess what? Satan is a spirit. 
angels are spirits, demons are spirits. They are all spirits that do not have bodies. But what is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visited him? That has made him a little lower than the angels. God thinks about you. God cares about you. I love it. Say it like this. Before you ever rolled over this morning, God's mind was upon you. He knows what you're going through. He knows your need. He knows the thought and intent of your heart. That's what I love about God. Hallelujah. He knows me. He knows our lying down. He knows our rising up. And he said, I know your need. And if you'll call upon me, I will answer you, and I will show you great and mighty things, things you cannot even imagine. We serve a God who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. How? According to the power that's working in us. This book brings faith right here. If you need a faith lift, praise God, read its pages. Uh, get around somebody that talks about Jesus. Get around somebody that loves Jesus. Get around somebody that... that, that has a great need and, and tell them talk about Jesus with me don't talk about the problems of life talk about Jesus just tell me about my Savior let me tell you about Jesus let me tell you what kind of man he is he's the one who can calm your trouble see he, he opened blinded eyes he can do anything that you need whatever your need release your faith and just believe that God is a good God and that God will bless your life God created man, a spirit, and a human body, and God gave him dominion over all the earth, and he gave that to human spirits that dwell in earthly bodies. Man disobeyed God. He fell into sin, and when he did that dominion that man had, it was transferred to Satan, and the Bible calls him the God of this world. That's who he is. Now, man who was created in God's image uh, he is separated from God because of sin. That's his condition. And so God had to send a redeemer to this planet so he could restore man and give him dominion once again. The prophet Isaiah, he saw it. And he said, this shall be a sign unto you. A virgin shall conceive and bear the child. And the child that is born shall be called Emmanuel. God with us. Now, the word Emmanuel is made up of three words in the Hebrew. In, which means inside. Man, which means mankind. And El, which means Elohim, or God, inside of man. Emmanuel, God with us. But you know, Jesus said, now, I'm with you. But said, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, the Holy Ghost, he said, he's going to be in you. He's with you, but he's going to be in you. He said, it's expedient for you that I go away. So now, God, who is the spirit being, is going to put his spirit into man. Elohim, God with us. I like to say it like this, God in us. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Paul said it's Christ in you, the mystery of God, the hope of glory. So you are united with God because God the Son came to this planet so he could be united and identified with us. He identified himself with us. So we could become identified with him. You have his word. You have his power. You have his nature. You have his name. You have his blood. You have his spirit. Rise up. Praise God. In the anointing of God. Rise up and start praising him. Thank God for this great salvation. I'm preaching better than you're shouting. Somebody shout me down. Come on now. I tell you, glory to God. This thing is wonderful that we have. We have a great salvation. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? I tell you, we, we need to praise him for what, what God has done. Emmanuel, God with us. Now, in the ninth chapter of Isaiah, the prophet said, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Now, the child was born, but the son was given. The child, he's brand new. You can call his name Jesus. But the son that was given, he's the Christ, the eternal Logos. He has been there all the time. Hallelujah. He's the ancient of days. He's the eternal, immortal God who sat upon the throne. He was there when God spoke the worlds into existence. The sons of God shouted for joy. Hallelujah. 
He was there in the beginning. He is the immortal, everlasting God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, all three in one, all encapsulated into the Godhead. And the wonderful thing is that the Son came to this planet. God became flesh, hallelujah. And so you and I could become a spirit being Fear with his glory, fear with his anointing, fear with his power. The mystery God had hidden for ages. If the devils had known this, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. They come out of that little upper room full of the Holy Ghost, speaking it in other tongues. And the devil thought he had it made. But now when, when they come out of that upper room on the day of Pentecost, that's 120 people. They look like Jesus. They talk like Jesus. They're doing the works of Jesus. Hallelujah. And they're acting just like Jesus. And now the devil, he's having a panic attack, and they turn their world upside down. Give the devil a panic attack. Get full of God. Get full of the Word. Get full of love. Get full of joy, and go out and set the captive free. Somebody go and praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Jesus is brand new, a baby born in a manger, but Christ is the immortal one living in a human body Jesus and when the, you put the two of them together you've got Jesus Christ Jesus 100% man Christ 100% God living inside of Jesus now I want to give you a little story why is this story so important on a snowy Christmas Eve a mother was taking her children to a Christmas pageant there in the farm community. And she asked her husband to come and to go with them, but he refused. He said, that story about Jesus is nonsense. Why would God lure himself to come to earth as a man? Why, that's ridiculous. It makes absolutely no sense at all. So she and her children, they left for the pageant. He stayed at home. Later that evening, the winds grew stronger. And the snow, it turned into a blizzard. And as the man looked out the window, all he could see was a blinding snowstorm. So he sat down to relax before the fire that evening. Then he heard a loud thump. Something had hit the window. And then another thump. And he looked out, but all he could see was just a few feet in front of him. And when the snow lifted a little, he, he ventured outside to see what had been beating upon that window. And in the field near his house, he saw a flock of wild geese. Apparently, they had been flying south for the winter, and they got caught in the snowstorm there at the farm and could not go on. They were lost. They were stranded on his farm. They were stranded with no food, no provisions, no shelters. They just flapped their wings and flew around the field in a low circle blindly and aimlessly. A couple of them had flown into the window, it seemed. The man felt so sorry for this, these geese. He wanted to help them. The barn would be a great place for them to stay, he thought. It's warm. It's safe. Surely they could spend the night there, and they can wait out the storm. So he walked over to the barn. He opened the doors wide. Then he watched and waited, hoping that they would notice the open barn door and go inside. But the geese just fluttered around aimlessly. They had no sense of direction. They didn't seem to notice the barn door or realize that it was open and what it could mean for them if they would go inside. The man tried to get their attention, but they just seemed to scare them every time he approached them. And they moved further away. Then he went into the house and he came back with some bread. He broke it up. He made some bread crumbs and made a bread crumb trail leading to the barn. They still didn't catch on. Now he's getting frustrated. He got behind them. He tried to shoot them toward the barn. Nothing he did could get them to go into that barn where they could be warm, and where they could be safe from the storms of life. Why won't they follow me, he asked. Can't they see this is the only place that they can survive the storm? He thought for a moment and he realized they won't follow a human. If only I were a goose, then I could save them, he said out loud. Then he had an idea. 
He went into the barn, got one of his own geese, carried it in his arms as he circled behind the flock of wild geese. Then he released it, and the goose flew through the flock straight into the barn, and one by one, the other geese, they followed it to safety. He stood silently for a moment as the words he had spoken a few minutes earlier played in his mind. If only I were a goose, I could save him. Then he thought about what he had said to his wife early in the evening. Why would God want to be like us? That's ridiculous. Suddenly, it made sense. God had done this. Because we were like the geese. We were blind. We were lost. And we were perishing. And God had his son become like us. So he could show us the way to save. To safety and to be saved. It was then that he realized the real meaning of Christmas. Suddenly he understood what Christmas was all about. And why Jesus Christ had come. Years of doubt and unbelief vanished like the passing storm as he fell to his knees and he prayed his first prayer. Thank you, God, for coming in human flesh to get people like me out of the storm. Aren't you glad he came? Songwriter said, I could not go to where he was, so he came to me in my brokenness, in my sorrow, in my pain. When I felt like no one loved me or no one cared. Have you ever been there? And then I realized how much God cared for me. We're his hands. We're his feet. We're his mouthpiece. There's a world out there that will never know the love of God if we don't take it to them. Sometimes we just show it by a kind word, a kind deed. Sometimes we're the only Bible anyone will ever read. I grew up in a Christian home. My dad, in my darkest moment, I said, Jerry, you've had a written epistle before you all your life. That's the way a man should live his life. It impacted me so much. I said, I want his Savior. That is what I call a real man. He was a man because he put his trust, his faith in Jesus. What do people see when they see you? Do they see someone real? Do they see someone who loves? They have their own problems. They have their own difficulties to deal with. But they come to bring Jesus a smile, a drop of water, a meal, a pat on the back, a prayer. I told my wife, I said, I'll tell you one thing I've learned. And I'm not bragging on me. Please don't take this wrong. I told her if a man knows how to pray, the world will be the path to his door. Most of the people that I minister to, they're not in this church. They are people that know me, that come to me. Brother Nelson, will you pray for me? People from my past where I worked, I know you're a man of God. Will you help me? What do people see when they see you? I don't want them to see some professional pulpit, pulpiteer standing up here. I want them to know, hey, that man's a real deal. He'll help you. He cares for you. He's been touched by the master's hand, and he can bring God to you. And that's the kind of church that we're trying to raise up here. Go and praise God because you're part of the army of God that God is using. Hallelujah. The Bible says that Jesus came to redeem us from sin. Now, in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law to redeem those that were under the law. He came to redeem us so that we might become sons of God. God kept his promise, and Jesus was born as that baby in the manger. That's why Christmas is such a special time of year. Jesus came to us, and he came to seek and save that which was lost. He came to redeem us. He came to make it possible for us to be restored from the fall and the dominion that God gave to man in the beginning. The last Adam, praise God, 
The Bible says much more. How much shall he much more give us all things? He came to give us power to master all of life. Hallelujah. And if you're not mastering life, it's because you have religion. And you, or you don't have revelation. You need to get into a church that teaches the new creation realities and begin to pray and begin to confess who you are. Hallelujah. People say, you're bragging. No, I'm not bragging. I'm bragging on Jesus. Hallelujah. I, I'll tell you what. God will get a word to you. He will talk to you. He will let you know. And, and he'll send somebody to give you an encouraging word. Start speaking faith over your family. Start talking to them. Start loving on them. My little four-year-old granddaughter was with us. And Teresa had to correct it the other night. She said, I'm, I'm sorry. And she started running herself down. I said, who told you that about yourself? You're not like that at all. You're like your mother. She was a brilliant child. You're like T.C. You're somewhat like me. Hallelujah. But, you know, I don't want that little child to feel like they can't make it. I never ran my child down. I never told one of my children, you can't do anything. I hear people do it. Tell them. You're made in God's image. You're special. You're somebody. You can do something that no one else can do. I heard one man say on the news commentator, for all you women that want to be something special, said, why don't you quit trying to be what everybody else is, and why don't you be what only a woman can be, a mother, somebody to take care of the family at home. Somebody going to praise me. I know that's not praise him. I know that's not politically correct, but it's true. Be what you can be, what, what a man can't be. Be a mother. Make a home. Be a helpmeet for a husband. Hallelujah. Hey, thank you very much. I appreciate that over there. One good amen. Isaiah said, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Jesus came as God's great gift of love. He demonstrated that love by his actions, by his deeds. He healed the sick. He opened blinded eyes. He caused the lame to walk. He performed miracle after miracle, demonstrating the great love of God. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If, if He said, I come to do his will. He said, the works I do, they're not my works. I'm doing what God sent me to do. If you want to know what the Father's like, look at me. Look at what I'm doing. If you want to know how much God loves you, look at the cross. God spared out his own son to deliver you. If you want to know what God is like, watch Jesus heal the people. If you want to know what God's will is concerning your condition, say, God, you know respect a person. You heal that one. You heal that one. You save that one. You save that one. You deliver that one. You deliver that one. And then say, praise God, I believe you'll help me. And that's what real faith is right there. It's not anything hard. It's just believing God. But Jesus came to us. Then he went to an old rugged cross, and he made it possible for us to be born again. So we could get out of the storm. Like those geese in the story. And just before Jesus went to the cross. He instituted Holy Communion. The Lord's Supper. And tonight we're going to celebrate that. Which commemorates the Lord's death, burial, resurrection. His ascension. And his soon coming. I want us to turn in our Bibles to 1 Corinthians 11.23. We don't have the news screen, the screen media tonight. So open your Bibles, 1 Corinthians 11, 23. This is Paul in his letter speaking to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three. He said, For I received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament, my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as oft as ye do eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the Lord's body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. I have to examine myself, and you have to examine yourself. Let a man examine himself, and 
So let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Verse 29. But he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Look at verse 30. For this cause many are weak and sickly, and many sleep. Many have already died because they took communion when they shouldn't take communion. That's what it says right there. See, Holy Communion is a memorial of the new covenant that we have with Jesus Christ. Christ died for us, and we have salvation because of his death, his burial, and his resurrection. The cup and the bread, these elements represent his body and his blood. The first element, the bread, speaks to us of our Lord's broken body, which was given to us. Isaiah said he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we're healed. He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities. That's the spirit. A transgression is a mild little sin. And then iniquities, they're gross sins, terrible sins, stuff you don't want to ever tell anybody that happened in your life. But he forgives all. It doesn't matter how great or how small. And, and, and then it says the chastisement of our peace was upon him. That has to do with your emotions. Peace is an emotion. And, and he gives the peace of God that passeth all understanding. So he dealt with our spirit. Then he deals with our soul, the mind, the will, and the emotion. And then he, he deals with our, our body. He says by his stripes you were healed. So he has provided total redemption for the total man. And in this supper tonight that we're going to celebrate, all three of those elements, those, those sin for your spirit, peace for your soul, your mind, and healing for your body, all three of those are represented in this meal we're going to take. His body was bo broken by stripes. His back was ripped apart by a cat of nine tails to provide healing for us. He was beaten. He was battered. He was bruised until... His body was beyond human recognition. Said they plowed his back like pharaohs in a, in a field, ripping the flesh from him. Oh, he suffered and cried out in pain and agony, but he was doing it all for you and me. The second element, the cup, represents his blood. That blood was shed for remission of our sins. Aren't you glad that your sins are gone? They've been remitted. That they've been washed away by the precious blood of Jesus. The cup speaks of our eternal salvation. Peter said, you are not redeemed with corruptible things from your vain conversation or your, your lifestyle, your former lifestyle. He said, but you were redeemed with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without spot and without blemish. So when we take Holy Communion, you know, we normally think of the cup that he offers us. But Jesus also talks of a cup. We read about his cup in John 18 and 11. And he says, this cup, I want you to see this cup. He said, this cup, which the Father has given me, shall I not drink it all? When he looked into that cup, he saw all types of things there. He, he, he saw all of the sin of humanity, all of the suffering, all of disease. Yet he cries out in that garden, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. He knows that he's going to be separated from the Father. He knows what he's fixing to go through as a man. The Word was made flesh. God became a man just like you and me so he could identify with every need that we have. And if you can ever get that revelation, every need was paid for at Calvary's cross. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Go and praise him. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus said, this cup which my Father has given me, shall I not drink it all? He's speaking of his own cup. And then that's the cup that he offers us. His cup is described in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty five. 25. I read it earlier. It said, after this manner, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Brother Ray... And Sister Julia, they've gone through a tremendous battle, health problems. When she came here a couple of years ago, she said, I had been sick, was it three years with that hacking cough? Three years? A long time. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you know the devil will tell you, yeah, it's permanent. 
<clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> that's permanent. You're never going to get over it. <clears throat> We're in a world of sin, <clears throat> but she got over it. Hallelujah. And she's healed. Amen. Brother Ray, <clears throat> shortly after her great victory, he, he was working, and they told him that his back was in such bad condition, it looked like that he had had a, a fall of about 10 or 20 foot, and that they would have to do major surgery. Stand up, brother. <clears throat> hallelujah. Shout about and dance. Show the people. <laughs> Glory to God. Woo! Hallelujah. <laughs> Heal by the stripes of Jesus. <laughs> Glory. He went to the doctor, did what the doctor said, but Dr. Jesus operated on him. Go on, praise God. And guess what? Every day, just about... Several days a week, they take Holy Communion at home because they know these elements and what they represent. Turn your faith loose. Praise God. Don't let the devil put something on you and keep it on you. He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his stripes we're healed. Two cups. The cup the Lord has had to drink and then the cup he's given to us. One represents the cup of death. The other represents the cup of life. One is horrible. One is marvelous. His cup was a cup of bruising. The scripture said it pleased the Father to bruise him. It wasn't what the Roman soldiers did. God saw your condition. God saw my condition. God looked down through the eons of time and said, I'm going to send my son. He knew we would fall. Jesus is the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. God wasn't surprised by man's transgression. God's not surprised by what the sinner does. But God sent his son to redeem us. Hallelujah. One cup was a horrible cup. That's the cup that Jesus drank. But the cup that he offers to us is the cup of glory and salvation. Christ's cup was a cup of sorrow. He offers us a cup of joy. His cup was the cup of the anger and the wrath of God. He offers us the cup of peace that passeth all understanding. His was the bitter cup of death. He offers us the sweet cup of eternal life. Hallelujah. Go on praising that you saved. Amen. Glory to God. And the cup that Christ gives to us, we drink it at his invitation. It is a cup of fellowship, a cup of friendship, a cup of loyalty, a cup of peace, a cup of healing, a cup of joy, a cup of eternal life. Oh, what a Savior. What a perfect sacrifice when God sent his only begotten son. Brother Ray, if you would sing some of that song, he was wounded for our transgressions. I wanted to sing some of that and then I'll, before I, you got a spike over there. <clears throat> before I finish, I want you to hear this song. Sometimes you know a message <clears throat> that has the right song with it. He had no way of knowing, because I didn't share it with anybody. I'm going to show you my notes. What I had written this afternoon, song, he was wounded by transgression. The Holy Ghost knew what was needed. He spoke it to me. <laughs> and he spoke it to my brother. Woo! Isn't that wonderful? God wants to get a message to you. Bless him, brother. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. Hallelujah. Surely he bore our sorrow. God's healing power into this house, hallelujah, into these live streams. On the cross crucified, Jesus suffered and he died.
take the Lord's Supper. If you recall, Judas left before Jesus passed the bread and the wine that night. He had betrayed the Master. Therefore, the unregenerated person has no place at the Lord's table. You must be born again to sit at the Lord's table, and you must then walk in the light of His Word. If there's any known sin in your life, don't come to the Lord's table until you get that sin washed in the blood and removed by the blood. This is a serious thing we're doing tonight. That's why I love it, because everybody has to examine their heart, myself included. 1 Corinthians 11, 27, listen to this. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. See, it's a judgment to those who take Holy Communion unworthily. 1 Corinthians 11, 29, For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation unto himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Therefore, let us all examine our hearts. Remember his benefits. Remember his salvation. Remember his healing. Remember his mercy. Remember how he forgave you. And treat others in like manner. Lastly, let's remember his coming. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six, For as often as you do eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he come. It's important, church that we go to Calvary often. We're to remember his benefits. We're to remember that he's coming back for a glorious, triumphant church, reminding ourselves as we remember him of our own personal experience with him. Search your heart. Is there any raft, any anger? any bitterness, any unforgiveness, any offense that you don't have under the blood. If there is, talk to the mass to get it under the blood. Adultery, fornication, maybe you're caught in something. Lying, stealing, cheating, 
And we hear about it on the news all the time. But God said, if you come to my holy table, if you come and eat of this meal, he said, I want you to examine yourself. And he said, don't you do it unworthily. See, God has made us worthy. You've heard me preach it. The whole church world will tell you, you're not worth anything. You're not worthy. But oh no, he has qualified us. The Father has. He has made us worthy. He invites us to his table. The Lord does. Because he paid the price for our redemption. And if we'll walk in the light of God's word, then all of the treasures from the king's bounty, they belong to you. And they belong to me. I want to ask you to come and I want you to pass out the elements. And as they're coming, passing out the elements, it, it has the bread and the fruit of the vine there. I want Brother Ray to sing that song as the ushers are serving you. I have a friend at home watching my live stream from his business. His stripes we and he said, I can't get that tonight, but I'm going to watch it. He's not a member here, but he's one of my good friends. He was and I sent him a text. I said, if you can find the crumb, a bread, a cracker, anything there. I said, if you can find some water, if you don't have the fruit of the vine, just take these elements. Say, God, by faith, I'm going to take Holy Communion. This man needs a miracle from God. Maybe you need a miracle. Hallelujah. But God, I heard him whisper to me today, miracle moments. Miracle moments. Could this be your miracle moment? Yes. Or he, he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. First, the bread. I'm going to ask Brother Elam after we take the bread. I'm going to ask him to pray. He said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. I want you to just take that little wafer, if you would, just snap it. And I want you to put it between your teeth. And as you gnash it, 
upon your teeth there. Remember this, you're bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. And he gave us something physical. Hallelujah. So that we could take it into our body. Glory to God. Let Glory. us eat it. Eat it all. Yes, Jesus. Say, Lord, thank you for healing my body. Call that loved one that you have. Lord, my friend watching by Facebook Live tonight, I release your miracle working power into his life, Lord. Brother Eden. us, Lord, on Calvary, Lord, for your body, Lord, that was broken, that we may be healed. We thank you, Jesus. No one else could do what you've done, Lord. Lord, they looked throughout everywhere, Lord, in heaven and on earth, nobody could have done what you've done. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done for us, for your healing power, the body, the stripes are on your back. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother Philip, if you would come, please. The second element, the cup. I want you to remember his cup now. How bitter his cup was. A cup of separation, pain, and sorrow. So he could offer to us this sweet cup of salvation. Communion with Glory him. Glory to God. So we could experience Christ in us. Yes. The hope of glory. Let us drink the cup which signifies his blood. He said, this do in remembrance of me. It is the New Testament in my blood. Let us drink it all in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Brother Philip. Father God, we thank you tonight for the blood of Jesus Christ. We know that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sins. But we have precious blood that has been shed in our behalf for us. But Lord, we thank you for that blood. We thank you for the cleansing power of that blood. There is power, wonder-working yeah. power Glory. in the precious blood of the spotless Lamb of God. Thank you to you. Yes. precious blood and the power of that blood in his name we pray hallelujah thank you brother glory to god the meal that heals hallelujah thank you lord jesus thank you for your blessings upon us lord hallelujah He was wounded for our transgression. Jesus back. Oh. I am healed. We are healed. Sing that verse, brother. On the cross, crucified, Jesus suffered, and he died. about it church yes our lord and think about the liberty was and the blessings you've had and that you gave your heart to jesus glory don't forget any of his benefits jesus. i release god's miracle working power creating miracles 
us into this house. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus, by the power of Calvary's blood and the great commission of the Lord Jesus Christ, as a minister of the gospel, he said, teach my word, preach my word, and heal the sick. Be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Glory. Oh, God, heal spirit, soul, and body. Heal those broken hearts, oh, God. Bind up their wounds. You heal the broken hearted. You bind up their wounds, Lord. I know you do. Hallelujah. That's my testimony. Woo! Glory. <laughs> what you couldn't move before, if it was a leg pain or a back pain, start exercising it. Start moving that part. Thank you, Lord. I'm healed. Glory. Woo! You need to get up and walk around the church to release your faith. Praise God. Get up and praise God for the great salvation. Praise Him for meeting you with that miracle moment. Hallelujah. Glory. 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 about the cross on the cross where he died on the cross crucified jesus suffered and he died the there anybody in here you need to make things right with god life, you need to find a place in the altar he, that that's something you want to give to the master it doesn't have to be Lord. sin it could be sickness. It could be a disease. It could be a tremendous need. I'll tell you what. I make my way to the altar. I come out here when nobody's here sometimes. And I come to this altar. And I say, God, I'm bringing you this. I'm not going to carry it. I refuse to carry it. I'm bringing it to the master. And I'm leaving it with you, Lord. Glory. Woo! Can wash away my sins. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious, oh, precious. The flow. 